Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Representative Doug Damon from District 16 here in Bangor, and it's great to look out and see such a crowd. The tonight's statement I read is from Secretary Charlie Summers, who has a scheduling conflict, could not make it. So these words are here's not mine, but I am proud to present them. He starts, I truly regret that I am unable to participate in tonight's forum. Representative Doug Damon has been kind enough to attend and read the following statement on my behalf. I very much appreciate the role you as conservative activists have in some of the most important debates taking place in our country today, and there are many. I know you agree with me that traditional marriage between a man and a woman must be preserved. While I oppose discrimination of any kind, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman, and we must not allow anything to take away from that. You should also know that I was one of 12 Republican state senators to uphold Governor McKernan's veto of the Gay Rights Bill on two separate occasions while serving in the Maine State Senate. On abortion, I believe exceptions must be made for the life of the mother or in cases of rape or incest, and that is why I have voted pro-choice. I also do not believe that governments should be involved in funding of abortions. Regarding the recent national debates on contraception, I do not support mandatory coverage of contraception. I do not support forcing an employer to offer a specific type of health insurance coverage, particularly if it is against their beliefs. I want you to know that I am running for the United States Senate because I believe America can do better. In his 1980 announcement for the presidency, Ronald Reagan outlined the great issues facing America and the lack of leadership in dealing with them. In reference to that lack of leadership, he said, I cannot and will not stand by and see this great country destroy itself. I was 20 years old then, now 32 years later, America finds herself in an eerily similar set of circumstances. Our nation's debt has skyrocketed, our economy is lagging, unemployment is too high, gas and oil prices are through the roof and government bailouts and stimulus packages are not the answer. Our military spending is on track to be reduced by one trillion dollars over the next 10 years. <clears throat> Yet the demand on our men and women in uniform continues to increase, as do our obligations at home and around the globe. And as if all of this was not enough, the largest federal program ever devised, Obamacare, is now poised to take control of one-fifth of our economy. I reject the notion that we can spend our way to prosperity. That is why I am running for United States Senate. I believe it is crucial that we have strong, experienced leadership in Washington, and I know that I can put my extensive, real-world experience with small businesses and public service together with my foreign policy experience gained through the U.S. military to work on behalf of Maine and our nation. I have served in public office at various levels and capacities, first as a member of the Maine State Senate, then as State Director for Senator Snow. As the New England Regional Administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration and now as Maine's 48th Secretary of State, I have also served my country as Commander in the United States Naval Reserve, serving in both of this generation of wars. Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as on the staff of the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I hope you will support me in my current endeavor to be Maine's next United States Senator. Again, I am sorry I could not be here in person tonight. I hope to meet each and every one of you on the campaign trail in the weeks to come. Thank you. We'll grant him the grace for that extra time as the opening and closing. <laughs> we have uh, now the order we're going to go in for this opening, um, for the opening remarks from the candidates who are here. We'll have Scott Ambush, if you would introduce yourself and go first, please. Thank you. Thanks for watching the this uh, forum here tonight, this debate. It's finally nice to have a debate. We've had forums where we just get to ask one question. And 
get to only answer one question. So hopefully tonight you'll be able to uh, have the opportunity to hear and pick the candidate in which you feel will do the best job as your next United States Senator. Tell you a little bit about myself. Again, I'm Scott Danboys. I'm from Lisbon Falls. I grew up in the area. I grew up in Carmel. And uh, my wife is from Bangor, and we've been married for 28 years. We're high school sweethearts, not at the same high school. We have two wonderful children. My son Gareth is 15, and our daughter Paige turns 13 in about a week and a half. And uh, we're very blessed. We were unable to have children for the first 12 years of marriage. And one thing I have come to realize, they're not my children, they're the Lord's children. And the reason I'm running, and the reason I got into this race, was for my children, your children, and grandchildren. Look at where America is today. We have wonderful opportunity to be optimistic. But I feel a lot of the generations that my age and younger, they fear. They fear for their children. And they have a right to fear, but they also have a responsibility to step forward and do all that they can. All that they can to teach Americanism patriotism to their children. I love this country. I'm a conservative, constitutional Christian. I do not hide my social issues. I wear them proudly on my sleeve. I believe marriage is one man, one woman ordained for God. And I believe children are God's greatest gift. And it starts at the moment of conception. I have always been right to life. We actually just got endorsed by the National Republican Coalition to Life. And we will fight for the rights of the children. We will fight for your rights. And we will fight for the rights of marriage between one man and one woman. I also want you to let you know, we got a lot to talk about tonight, about the budget, about the deficit, about taxes, about where this country is actually going. So hopefully tonight, come up and talk to me afterwards, and I'll be your candidate. Thank you. Second, the candidate, Richard Bennett. Uh, hi, uh, thanks so much, uh, Bob, and thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you for the for the uh, the hosts of this evening's uh, event. Uh, my name is Rick Bennett. I live in Oxford. Um, until this uh, election emerged, I was what I happily called myself a recovering politician uh, because I served in uh, the main house and the main senate for. A number of years back in the 1990s, and was privileged to uh, to become uh, eventually president of the Maine Senate um, back in uh, about 10 years ago. Um, since then, I've been uh, maybe some of this is on your material, but I, since then I've been focused on raising my kids, who are now 16 and 14, and uh, running my business. Um, I am the only candidate here who has been spent the better part of the last decade creating jobs in Maine and building a business in Maine, and uh, that has informed much of my interest now in returning to public life and presenting myself as a candidate for the U.S. Senate. Uh, the principal reason, um, like Scott, uh, my kids now are 16 and 14. I'm very blessed. My wife and I have uh, a lovely daughter and a lovely son, and I think about releasing them into the world in a few short years. And I wonder what kind of world they'll be released into, and particularly with the level of de deficit spending and, and irresponsibility that exists in Washington, D.C., and particularly under the leadership of Harry Reid in the United States Senate. It must end. We are spending every year more than a trillion dollars, more than that that is taken in, and the U.S. Senate has been spending that money without even passing or considering a budget. In my view, that's unconscionable, it's immoral, that we've racked up $16 trillion of debt that my kids and, and our grandkids are going to have to pay for. It's immoral, it uh, uh, threatens our national security, it threatens our economy, and it limits and shackles their opportunities and freedoms in uh, the, the coming uh, lives that they will each try to build for themselves. And great, it's a great pleasure to be with all of you, seeing a lot of old friends, 
I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Bruce, follow up with please. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Ball, for this opportunity. I want to thank the sponsors very much for allowing us uh, this event to take place. Uh, I am the State Treasurer Bruce Poliquin, and I can't tell you how much fun I'm having being your State Treasurer. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have that position. Uh, when this opportunity presented itself, the one for the United States Senate, I looked at my job, my responsibilities to you, the taxpayers, uh, and my family, uh, and concluded that although we're doing some tremendous work with a terrific governor in Augusta, we can only get so far in the state of Maine. We cannot fully fix the state of Maine until we fix Washington. Now, one of the things that I've been very proud of is our record in Augusta. For example, when we came to this new administration 15 months ago, we were handed with a $4.1 billion shortfall in the pension plan, the pension benefits we owe our teachers and our state workers, $4.1 billion. And folks said, you know, you can never change that, Bruce. It's too hard. The unions are too difficult. They're too strong. But what we were able to do was reform that pension plan such that we now have a plan that is, uh, is more, that gives more security for the folks that are in it. It also costs the taxpayers less. Because we reform that, we're now spending $200 million less per year. And because of that, the legislature was able to pass the biggest tax cut in the history of Maine. So if you look at the problems in Maine, they're in great part financial. If you look at the problems in Washington, they're also financial. This is the fourth year in a row that career politicians in Augusta have spent $1 trillion more than they've collected from us in taxes. And they make up the difference by borrowing the money. And we now have $16 trillion in debt with no plan to pay it off. We need someone who understands these financial issues. I do. We need someone who is tough and will go down there and tell the truth, regardless of the criticism. I'm a pro-life Catholic. I believe that when one mom and one dad get together, the help of God create a new life. Nobody has the opportunity or the authority to terminate that life before its natural conclusion. I also believe very strongly in the Constitution and the Second Amendment is very clear. The people of this country have the right to keep and to bear arms and it shall not be infringed upon. Thank you very much and look forward to the debate. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Thank you for inviting us tonight. My name is Deborah Plowman, and um, I am the senator from the neighboring town in Hampton. And on November, in November in 2010, people like you and I watched the walls of Jericho fall. And we walked in. And we are making changes at the Maine Legislature. In 1974, I was on one of the first buses to Washington, D.C. for the Hand Around the Capitol Life Rally. In 1993, I voted against Governor McKernan's bill, an affirmative statement that said that there would be no, none, limitations on a woman's right to an abortion, including waiting periods, parental notification, information. I was one of the few people on my committee to vote no, and I took some heat. And the heat I took was from our current U.S. Senator and then Governor McKernan. I sat on the Judiciary Committee for eight years, and every year when an abortion bill came forward, I voted out a pro-life position, and I fought it. I fought until, with great heartbreak, the people of the state of Maine said partial birth abortion was okay. How that ever happened in our great state will never, ever be answered to my satisfaction. 
but to end a life in the most horrific, horrendous way that you can even imagine was upheld. I have continued to put forth legislation, the last one being this year, when I asked that we join 36 other states and the United States government to recognize a woman's choice to have her baby, that choice that we're all supposed to be able to make, if you destroy that pregnancy, then that child should be recognized as an unborn child. I am lost. I have fought this fight. I will continue to fight this fight. My voting, voting record will also show that every year on the Judiciary Committee and ever since, I have voted to assure that marriage is between a man and a woman. Those are my basic principles. I hold them very, very dear. And I will, when you send me to Washington, be voting the same way I have voted for 16 out of the last 20 years. And I want to be your candidate 